against shall stand. I know eternal life is given, that grace and power are in His hand. I know, I know, I know, I know that Jesus lives, and on the earth, and on the earth against shall stand. I shall see him by and by. I know, I know, I know, I know that Jesus lives, and on the earth, and on the earth again shall stand. I know, I know, I know, I know that life is given, that grace and the power. Wonderful singing by the choir this morning. God bless them as always. Um, we are all welcome to our service. We also want to extend a warm welcome to our internet audience. We pray that the Lord that is blessing us here will also bless you wherever you are located. This is Apostolic Faith, and we're located at number 15, Penn Hill Road, and that's in Bexley. DA 53 EP. If you are just joining us, you've only missed the Sunday school and um, the um, opening of our service where we have had the choir sing some very beautiful songs for us. Um, they started with a piano voluntary by Brother Tim that was followed by a violin solo by Faith. And then we have the choir sing He Arose. And then they followed that immediately with I'll Have a New. Um, well, I'll have a new, that's the title of the song. And then we've just had that beautiful duet sung by Ayo and Christiana. And we pray that the Lord God will help us, that we all will be assured that our Redeemer liveth. It, it, it is our turn now to sing, um, and hopefully we can match the choir as they sang beautifully this morning. We'll be singing hymn three. 09 from CGS, CGS 309, and Sister Emma will lead us in singing. God bless you all.
We'll sing verses one, two, and three only. One, two, three only.
and is going to rise today in our hearts. Amen. Amen. For we pray, we want to sing in Christ alone. And we will conclude this song with a chorus that says, On Christ the soul, little rock I stand. I know we know it. Okay. If you can, let's stand to sing this. we are to be found in Christ and that's why we are standing here today it is not by our powers not by our might Lord for this we say glory be unto your name we can praise you enough we can't praise you enough for your love that love that brought you down you wore flesh you became like one of us and you tested our experiences. Lord, for this we say glory be unto your name. We bless your name, O God. For in that love we have found provision. In that love we have found protection. In that love we have found deliverance. And in you and you alone, O Lord, we are alive. Lord, praise be unto your name. 
We thank you because the grave could not hold you. The powers and the schemes of men could not hold you. And because you live, you said, we shall live also. Lord, glory be unto your name. We shall not be like walking cops. You have brought us that we might have a new life. You have brought us that we might have a new body. Starting with a new life. Oh, Lord, we pray that you come and speak to us, oh, Lord. And make our hearts pliable. Make our heart that ground that your word can penetrate. Lord, come and help us today. We know that spirit that rose up Christ from the dead is here today. And it's going to quicken our bodies. It's going to prompt us. Lord, do it, oh Lord. We thank you for the many blessings that you are blessing our brethren in Norway. We pray that you will continue that blessing today. Amen. As you bless us here, you bless them. Amen. As you bless them there, you bless us. Amen. And wherever people are gathered today, even as we commemorate Easter, oh, King of glory, our hope is not in vain. We are hopeful. We are having positive expectation that our problems, our difficulties, our sicknesses, our, dif- our, our mountains will be rolled away. Will be rolled away. We pray for unction upon your servant today. Lord, that unction that your word will come out with power and will cancel sin. That word of God with authority that will leave us with rejoicing as we we'll leave this place. Lord, we pray, let it be our portion. Let us experience it. Bless us, O Lord, and make us a blessing. For we ask all in Jesus' name.
1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 18. Is our Bible ready? 1 Thessalonians 4, chapter 4, verse 16 to 18 is our Bible reading. 16. For, shall, for the Lord shall descend from heaven Amen. with a shout, Amen. with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together Amen. with them in the clouds Amen. to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Resurrection morning, when the trump of God shall sound, we shall roll. Hallelujah, we shall rise. Then the saints will come rejoicing, and no tears will ever be found. We shall roll. Hallelujah, we shall roll. We shall rise. We shall roll. Hallelujah, we shall roll. my opening text from <clears throat> the book of First Corinthians chapter 15, and I'll be reading verse 20. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead Amen. and become the first fruits of them that slept. Amen. Because he lives, we shall also live. Amen. We want to thank God for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise God that Jesus resurrected. Amen. You know, as Paul said in this 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if Christ had not risen, then we would have believed in vain. We all that we might be going through now will have just been in vain. There will have been no need to come to church. There will, be no, there will have been no need to even talk about repentance or salvation because it would then mean that everything will end in this world. And Paul said that with them will have been the most miserable. 
of all people. You can imagine what it would have been if Jesus Christ had died and remained in the grave like other religious leaders. But we praise God that Jesus Christ resurrected. And because he resurrected, we shall also resurrect. And there is hope for us because Jesus Christ is alive. Because he lives, we shall also live. You know, um, that was Friday when Jesus was apprehended when they tried him, when Jesus was beaten, and then finally he was nailed to the cross. And it was like, um, where is our hope? Even those that followed him closely, some of them, most of them actually, if not all of them, went back. Peter, the very bold Peter, was approached by just a little damsel. And he said, no, I never knew this man. That is what despondency can do. When you are fully and completely discouraged, when you lose hope in all things, when it looks like life is not worth the living, you just don't have hope in anything or anyone. For the disciples of Jesus Christ, it was like, well, this is all that we hope for. They never knew that Jesus Christ could be arrested. They never knew that he could be beaten the way he was beaten. They never knew that Jesus Christ could be crucified. They never knew that Jesus Christ could die. In spite of them having been with Jesus for about three and a half years, and Jesus had been telling them that the prophecies must be fulfilled. I came to the world for a purpose, and that purpose must be realized. And some of them said, we will go with you. At any length that you will go, Jesus let them know that it was going to be a difficult one. Unfortunately, they did not seem to grasp the message. And so when Friday came and all of this happened, they all seemed to lose hope in Jesus Christ. You know, in um, the book of Luke chapter 24, from verse 13 to verse 24, there we will read the account of two disciples on their way to Emmaus after that Jesus Christ had resurrected on Sunday. And they, they had already heard the testimony of the women that went to the grave of Jesus Christ and came back with the good news that Jesus Christ had been resurrected. But you know, there was still something in them that was unbelieving, that was making them to doubt. Because they, as they rightly say, let, let's just look at that place. You know, not only the disciples, but the whole of Israel looked up to Jesus Christ, at least those that followed him, they looked up to him as the deliverer that had come to deliver Israel from the bondage of the Romans. They thought he was going to be their champion. That was why they wanted to crown him and make him king because they saw the throng that was following him. They saw the miracles that he was working and didn't they say that no man can do these miracles you are doing except he be from God, except God be with him. So they knew that Jesus Christ was extraordinary. They knew that Jesus Christ was not an ordinary man. And so they felt our deliverer has come. Finally, we'll be delivered from the bondage of the Romans. But Jesus did let them know. Unfortunately, they didn't take note of all that he said, that my kingdom is not of this world. Let's see in um, Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, and I'm going to read verse 21 in particular. These two disciples on their way to Emmaus, they were, they were discussing among themselves, expressing their disappointment. And in verse 21, they echoed what was ringing in the mind of many of the people of Israel. They said, but we trusted that it had been he which would have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. It's like, where is our hope? Jesus Christ was with them. He just met them, suddenly appeared to them on their way to Emmaus. And as they were discussing and saying, what, what, what could have happened? I, I never thought that this man could die. And Jesus asked them, what is it that you are talking about? They, they told him, I, are you a stranger in Israel? That you didn't know about all these things that had happened all these days? Have you not heard that Jesus Christ, the hope of Israel was taken by our leaders. He was beaten and he was crucified and that he died. In fact, today is the third day since he's been dead. That is hopelessness. And I don't know your situation today. You know, sometimes man gets to that point where it's like, well, I'll just give up now. And that is why some people commit suicide. But we praise God 
that Jesus Christ makes the difference. Amen. And because Jesus Christ lives, we shall live. I don't know what discouragement you might have, you might be going through. I don't know what hope seems to have been lost in your life. You know, sometimes we believe so much in some people that we think, ah, we just cannot do without them. Uh, they, they just have to be there forever. They just must be there. But because they are humans, sometimes it pleases God to take them away. And sometimes, you know, we look up to some individuals. I think it was my daughter that was asking me over the weekend. She said, why is it that some people that you see in the gospel, in the church, as, wow, these people are staunch members, they are great men, they are great women. He said, suddenly, you don't see them again in the church. Suddenly, they seem to do certain things that are strange, and you are wondering. And I said, well, that's right, because they are humans. And that is why Jesus has en 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 encouraged us that we should look up to him only. He said, the Bible says we should look up unto Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Don't look unto any man. Don't look unto any woman. Anyone can let you down. Anybody can fail you. If your hope rests on man, you can be sure that you'll be disappointed. But if our hope is in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter. Let the whole world collapse. Let everybody that we have ever known to be Christians say they are no longer Christians. I said sometimes uh, I watch some documentaries and they say they want to use it to prove um, the restoration of Jesus Christ. They want to use it to prove the birth of Jesus Christ, that it was miraculous, and the rest of it. Sometimes I take interest in watching them, but before I start watching, I have said to myself, whether or not your proof is right, or you, you get it right or get it wrong, uh, whatever the outcome of your investigation may be or whatever, I just don't care anymore. I have reached a point of no return. I have made up my mind. I have pitched my tent with Jesus Christ. And so it doesn't matter what science may discover. It doesn't matter what philosophy may propose. Jesus Christ is alive. And that makes the difference in our lives. Many of us bear the testimony of the resurrection of Jesus Christ because we know that he has saved us from sin and unrighteousness. A number of us have tried in the past to overcome sin. We have done all that we possibly could, some with fasting. Some people will even lock themselves up in a room and decide that I just want to overcome this body of sin. I just don't want to do this anymore. But you come out of that um, dark room where you feel that you just don't want to see the light again until you have overcome. You come out and your sin is, uh, is waiting for you at the entrance. But when Jesus comes into a life, he transforms that life. And you find that that which you were not able to do with your own strength, in an instant, Jesus does it for you. Have you seen a smoker who said they couldn't do without smoking? And suddenly they come across Jesus Christ and Jesus breaks that bondage. And right from that moment, they cannot not smoke any longer. Amen. People will go to rehab. Um, they will do all sorts of things. Some will leave them um, real cigarettes and begin to smoke um, e-cigarettes. But all to no avail. Some will tell you, I know I am killing myself gradually. But they cannot help themselves. All they need is Jesus Christ. The resurrected Jesus Christ. He that is above all. Jesus Christ that died and that rose again and remains alive forevermore. That's whom they need in their lives. And so we see that Jesus Christ makes the difference. For the disciples of Jesus Christ, some of them left him when he was um, um, apprehended. Actually, all of them did. They ran away. Those that ventured to follow, followed from afar, including Peter. And you know that even today, it's still happening in the Christendom. Some people that were running the race before, that you were seeing in the forefront, suddenly that verse of the scripture is fulfilled in their lives, that the first shall become the last, and the last shall become the first. Suddenly they have lost him, and they have gone back. Some were very active in the service of the Lord. They were doing one thing or the other for God before. But suddenly, discouragement set in, 
And they gave room to the enemy. And the enemy of their soul would deceive them and tell them that there is something better out there. You can use your time for something better out there. And they will leave the work of God. And whatever they have been doing for God, they drop it. I'm just okay. I just want to be coming and be going. And you know, um, there is a saying that there is no stagnant, no water can remain stagnant and remain the same. When a stagnant water is there, it will be evaporating and also it will be smelling. Because no water flows in and it doesn't flow out. Don't allow discouragement. Remember that Jesus Christ came for your sake. And Jesus Christ is resurrected. He is alive. And he can give you back life. That steam that you have lost, that courage that you have lost, that interest you have lost in the work of God, in the service of the Lord, God can restore it back to you today. For these disciples, it was like, well, nothing more to do. You know that at some point, even after Jesus resurrected, Peter gathered about six other disciples together and said, you know what? I go a fishing. That boat that I have left, that net that I have left, I'm going to pick it up again. And what did the other six say? They said, we will come with you. How many people have you led away from the Lord? Because you have decided to slow down. Because you have decided to look back. And you have taken a number with you. Praise God that Jesus met Peter again. Amen. Praise God that Jesus met those disciples again. Amen. But you know, it is not everyone that slips off the backslide that comes back. Before they die. But today, God is giving all of us a second chance. Amen. That he, Jesus Christ, has resurrected. Amen. And as he resurrected, he restored hope Amen. in the hearts of the, of the disciples. Amen. And he's going to restore hope in your heart today. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hope is alive. Amen. Let us keep it there. Yes. Let's keep hope alive. Our Lord Jesus Christ is alive. Amen. In that First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 16 that I just read. 1 Corinthians 15, 16, after that Paul um, said all that was going on in the church of Corinth. You know, this Corinthian church was indeed a troubled church. There were so many things happening there. These were believers, but among them, suddenly there were those that never believed, that didn't believe anymore in the resurrection story, and they began to contest it. And then Paul took them through it and made them to know that they were fools, to have changed from that which was committed to their hands. And then finally, in that verse 20, he says, But now is Christ risen Amen. from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Amen. You know, if Jesus had not um, 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 arose from the death, we would have been hopeless. We too, we would not have any hope. But we praise God that indeed, God of heaven and earth raised his son up from the dead. Amen. Grave could not hold him back. The seal of the, of, of the Romans could not hold him back. The stone that was rolled against his grave could not hold him back. Even the soldiers that kept watch, they could not hold him back. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. Power that saves from sin. Power that gives victory. Even in the dream. This is a name that you can call upon in your dream and you will be victorious. Yes. This is the name that uh, you are going on the road and incidents are happening left and right. You can suddenly call this name and heavens will listen to you yes. and heavens will come to your aid. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I don't want you to give in to discouragement. No. Jesus Christ is still alive. Yes. You might have prayed and prayed and prayed over an issue and it looks like that issue is just stubborn. It's just refusing to leave. Don't give up. Don't give up. Amen. Hold on to Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. He will give you life. Amen. Yeah, it was at the Sunday school this morning, uh, during the opening of the Sunday school, that our teacher, while praying, said that every good thing in our lives that is dead, Today, they will be revived in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, that's your instrument that is already gathering dust. That you are no longer using for the Lord. <laughs> Say to yourself today that I am going to keep hope alive. Amen. 
that I am going to remain at the battlefront and I will lay my sword at the feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't give up. Amen. Don't give up. Amen. Don't give up on your husband. Amen. Don't give up on your wife. Don't give up on that child that is refusing to come to church. Don't give up on that child that is coming but is refusing to pray through. God will touch his heart. Amen. God will touch her heart. Amen. God will restore hope in your home. Amen. It could be your business that is um, not um, f- f- going on very well anymore. It could be that you are already thinking, yeah, I better just pack it up. Don't pack it up. Give Jesus a chance. Give him a trial. You know, in, in the book of Psalm, Psalm 42, verse 11. Because discouragement is not new. Some people have been discouraged in the past. Psalm 42, and I'm going to read verse 11. Say, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. You can say to your own heart, to your soul also this morning, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Hope yet in Jesus Christ, and God will give you life. You know, there is life after life. There is life after life. Yes, as Christians, we are only here, we are on a transition here. Because a time is coming that we will leave this body. When this body will die, I, I, was, I was telling them where, why we were discussing this lesson at home. I did say that I lost my, my dad in 1993, and I lost my mom in, well, don't ask me, I think that was 2000. <laughs> I said, today, if you go and dig their graves, there will be no flesh there anymore. That flesh will have been rotting, it will have melted away. I said, but you see, as we lay them in the coffin, maybe with their hands like this, I said, those hands will remain like that. And they will still lie down facing the sky, but all the skin and everything will have gone. Their bones will just be there. So this body of sin, it cannot inherit eternity. That is why the Bible says that this is a corruptible body. Say this corruption shall put on incorruptible. Yeah, he shall put on that body that is not corruptible, and that is the body that shall live forevermore. So for us as Christians, we know that death is not the end of our being here. There is life after life for us as Christians, because our Lord Jesus Christ, who has resurrected, he is coming back again. Yes. And as we read in, in, in the Bible reading, it says the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yes. I don't know who you have lost, that person that is very, very dear to you. It could be your parent, it could be your, your spouse. It could, be, it could even be a child that you have lost. Did they die as Christians? If they did, there is hope for you. Yeah. You are the one that is still left on the race. You need to keep on keeping on. You need to keep on trusting God. You need to keep on uh, making up your mind to say, you know what, I am going to remain in the Lord. Yeah. And for as long as you do, a day is coming that you'll be reunited with them. When you will see them in glory. When you too will enter into glory with them. And, and then there will be no end to it anymore. You know, there is an end to our being here on earth. There is a time that God is going to say enough is enough. And he will call us home. If we don't die before Jesus comes, Jesus is certainly coming. And at the time that Jesus comes, those of us that remain alive, the Bible says we will also be transformed. And then we will be raptured. We will meet the Lord in the, in the air. The Bible says there we shall remain with him forever. Amen. What else are we looking for as Christians? That's the best hope that we can ever have. That, oh yes, that my mom that I love so much. That my dad that I love so much. Yes, a day is coming that I shall see them again. Yeah. That is the hope that Jesus Christ has given us. You know, if we are able to endure to the end, um, the, as Jesus Christ endured all the suffering to the end, a time is coming when he will take us home with him. Let's look at Revelation chapter 21. 
You see, in, uh, here on earth, when we lose a dear person, someone that is very close to us, or we lose an opportunity, we do cry. There are tears that run down our cheeks. But in heaven, there will be no more tears, Amen. because Jesus shall wipe them all away. Amen. In Revelation chapter 21. I read from verse 3 to verse 7. It says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. You know, what are those former things? They are the things that we are experiencing today. They are the difficulties, the troubles, the challenges. There is no money to pay mortgage. There is, you, want to, you are looking for a job. You've done your CV over and over and over again. And you are still getting a negative response from everywhere that you are going. Those are the things that shall pass away. Those are the things that shall be no more. In verse 5, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. These words are true and faithful. They shall be fulfilled. Jesus Christ is coming again, and he's coming to rapture us home. In Revelation chapter 22, I read from verse 1 to verse 5. Revelation 22 from verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. You want to drink of that water of life. You know, we all miss the Garden of Eden. We never saw it. We never witnessed it. But what we have read in the Bible is that it was a beautiful place. You know, God supplied everything that Adam and Eve needed there. But sin made them to lose it. And that is why you and I, up to today, we didn't have the opportunity to benefit from the abundance that God provided there. But here we go, that God has got another place prepared for us. There's another provision for us in heaven. He said, and he showed me a pure river of water of life clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Verse 2, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life. Do you remember the tree of life that we read about in the book of Genesis? It shall come back again, and you and I will have access to it. It says, which bear twelve manner of fruits, and yielded a fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Uh, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Verse 4, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. You know, that is our hope. That's what, that's what we're expecting. That's the reason we are here virtually every day of the week. For some people, that is why they keep sleepless nights. This is why some cannot do without their Bible. This is why some kneecaps are already hard. Because they have spent hours and upon hours upon hours on their knees praying to God. But the time is coming Amen. when all these efforts, all this labor shall be rewarded with eternity. Amen. And that will be eternity with God in heaven. Amen. I'm sure you want to be part of that. Amen. For us as believers, that is our hope. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, from verse 50 to 53, that we read in the Sunday school this morning. Say, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We cannot inherit the kingdom of God with the flesh and blood. It says, neither doth corruption inherit corrup um, incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality that time is coming and it won't be long anymore because Jesus Christ can look down from heaven and see that this suffering is much and see that all these troubles they are much they are nearly overwhelming us the Lord will not allow our soul to perish Jesus Christ is coming. Hold on to him. Don't lose hope. Friday has gone. Today is Sunday. And if you're on Sunday, if you haven't felt it yet, you can feel it today. That Jesus Christ has resurrected. Friday has gone. 
when it was um, gloomy, doomy, when Jesus Christ was hanging there on the cross and there was darkness all over the place, that Friday is gone. It is gone. Jesus Christ has resurrected. He has brought back hope where there was hopelessness. That is a day that we all look forward to. But you know, in 1 John 3, verses 2 and 3, um, let's, he says there, Behold now, we are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when it shall appear, we shall be like him. For he, well, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. I can assure you heaven is a pure place. Heaven is a holy place. God is a holy God. God is a pure God. There is no sinner that can see God. There, it doesn't matter if they are sleeping in church or not. It doesn't matter if they know the Bible from Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to Revelation chapter 22 and the last verse there. That will not save any man. It will not save you no matter how number of days or years that you fast. What can save you, what can make you to see God is that your soul is saved from sin and unrighteousness. And that you can only get through the blood of Jesus Christ. That this morning, the Bible says that this day, as you hear his voice, do not harden your heart wherever you may be all over the world or with us here. As you are hearing the voice of God, if there is still sin in your life, I tell you, my friend, once the rapture happens, the moment that it happens, all the stories that you have heard, all the sermons you have heard, all the passages you have read in the Bible, they will suddenly come back to your memory. You will suddenly remember and you will suddenly begin to pray and, and you will want to turn back the hand of the clock, but it will be too late. Don't be caught in your sin and unrighteousness. Jesus Christ is coming. We are talking about the fact that Jesus lives and that therefore we shall also live. But that life is not for sinners no. that fail to repent. That life is for sinners that have repented and have become Christians. You want to be one of them today. One of those that are waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. One of those that have to have this hope or that want to have this hope of life in you, one of those that will live because Jesus Christ is alive. I invite you to the altars of prayers. Come and seek the Lord afresh this morning. Let Jesus Christ come into your life afresh. Turn the, your, the sins of your life over to him. Tell him that you want to be his all the days of your life. Tell him that you want to come back. Come back. Come back home. The Bible says, son, give your heart unto me. Daughter, give your heart unto me. I don't know the sin in your life. Jesus Christ is calling you today. It may be the last time. It may be the last time that you hear the voice of the Lord that God will call you to repentance. Don't let this time pass you unrepented. God bless you.
Jesus Christ, we thank you for agreeing to come to this world of woe to die for our sins. You came to die so that we would die no more. Thank you for that hope of resurrection. Thank you because you will help us to make it to the end. Bless us as we go on our knees. Meet with us, O oh Lord, for we pray in Jesus' name.